several points I wanted to make. The first one is that I agree about the shared responsibility of the West in the kind of strategy deadlock and the fact that Russia is seeing NATO expansion as an existential threat. But I would still dissociate the strategic de deadlock, <clears throat> which is a shared responsibility from the decision to do war and to do that kind of war, a full scale invasion targeting civilian. And for me, <clears throat> sorry, this is Russia's alone decision. In fact, it's Putin's alone decision taken against, <clears throat> sorry, the will of the majority of the Russian political establishment. So I think there was other ways for Russia to react than the war and the war is weakening. <clears throat> Sorry, Russia's legitimacy on, on the long run. <clears throat> I have three key points I just wanted to make. The first one is the question of avoidability. The war was avoidable. It was not written in the Putin's regime DNA that they would invade. There was many other way they wanted to be influential and to keep spheres of influence. And of course, Russia is a former colonial imperial center. It has disdain toward the new uh, post-Soviet societies, but that could have stayed only at the kind of cultural and societal aspect, and that should may not have been transformed into, into a war. And when I say that there are, there are many ways of being a great power, and I think Russia has genuinely tested several uh, uh, of them, and really in the 2000s thought that integrating into the world community, into the world economy would make its voice heard and its claims kind of partly uh, recognized. And it's only when they realized that this integration strategy was not working, that the kind of classic old fashioned sphere of influence mechanism was not working, that they begin looking to other strategies that were more related to kind of maintaining, keeping or provoking territory, territorial instability in the, 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 the countries around. So what I'm trying to say that there have been for me a shift from Russia thinking it can keep Ukraine in a sphere of influence away from NATO to moving to a, a, a strategy that is now about territorial conquest or at least grab of land. And I agree, Russia and Putin doesn't want to recreate the Soviet Union or the Russian empire. It's not about that. It's using now grab of lands as a kind of solution to the failure of being respected as a great power. And I think that's a, that's a, 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 a very concerning a, a trend. My second point is that uh, Professor Scheimer, you were saying about it's all about NATO expansion for Russia. And I think it was the case until now, sure it is now anymore. I think now, unfortunately, it has become much more complex on the Russian side. And I think we have to recognize there have been a kind of crescendo, a gradual move in the way Russia is framing the conflict that is of concern. What we have now, it's narrative that are ambiguously either about the strategic concern of uh, a Ukraine or joining NATO, or that as about purely denying Ukraine's legitimacy as a state and as a nation. There have been really ambiguous comments in uh, uh, Putin uh, uh, speeches and of uh, uh, several of other official governments. I mean, there are real strategies of destatization of Ukraine that I found problematic. I found there are Russian kind of schizophrenic narrative about Ukrainians need to be told by force that they are a brotherly nation with Russia and all the narrative about denazification. I mean, Ukraine has a far right culture. Russia has one, the US has one. You have transnational far right groups. I don't think the way it has been framed by Russia is legitimate. It's really, and you may have seen the RIA Novosti articles a few days ago. It's really calling for mass killing. And of course, it's really a novelty. It's not an official statement by Putin or Lavrov, but it has been authorized. So my, what I'm trying to say now is that it has become more complex on the Russian side. I think because of the failure of getting their great power claim respected, now they have moved to something that is much more complex and much more dangerous. And my third point is that the Russian's vision is not static. And I think we have, it's not written in stone as we have seen it's evolving. And I think we have to realize now that things are still evolving on the Russian side because war is a kind of revolutionary open-ended moment. And so Russia is still adjusting its own vision, its own narrative and its own capacities on the ground and all that is in flux. And I think it's important for us to realize that you have all these contradictory narratives arriving from the Russian side. Sometimes Russia seems to say it's just about getting a friendly regime in Kiev and being sure that Ukraine is neutral. Sometimes it seems to be saying like, 
Ukraine should be partitioned and Eastern territories should join Russia or be a kind of buffer zone. And sometimes it's about Ukraine is not legitimate to exist at all. And I think we should realize this complexity because what is telling us, it's telling us that there are tensions at the Kremlin. The Kremlin is not a unified uh, uh, system. You have, it's an ad, ad, ad hoc construction and there is a party of war in Russia that is pushing for the radicalization of narrative. That is very unhappy with the diplomatic talks going on now. And I think it's really important for us to realize at least this three language of Russia on the war and the NATO one is unfortunately not the only one now. And we have to be sure we try to invite Russia to going back to discussing the neutrality issues, which is the, the easiest one in fact, and avoiding the Russian uh, uh, policy moving toward really accusation of Ukraine not being a legitimate state because that will make the discussion relatively impossible to, to uh, 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 um, to finalize. And I agree with you about the fact that, I mean, we need to fast to find face saving solution for Russia. And we need to be sure that if Ukraine is able to cut a deal with Russia, there is no US kind of regime and strategies or maintaining of sanctions that would of course make things impossible uh, on the Russian side to be, to be accepted. So I'm just, I will stop here, but just to say that I think things are still very much in flux that it's mostly a shared responsibilities, but the war is Putin's responsibility largely against the will of his own governments. And that we have now worrisome narratives coming from the Russian side about Ukraine legitimacy to exist that we should take into consideration and do our best to try to push Russia to go back about just discussing the, the strategic aspect and, and, and stopping NATO expansion and not moving to really narrative that are, that are uh, uh, disempowering the pure existence of, of Ukraine. I will stop here. Thank you.